Hello. In this lesson, <clears throat> excuse me, I'd like to talk about this absolute value function. We call it ABS function. Uh, we want to discuss the differentiability of this function uh, by applying the definition of a derivative. Okay, as we are all familiar with this function's graph, and this function, of course, has a uh, very specific form as piecewise function, okay? And uh, the piecewise function form is like this. Uh, by hopefully by this time, you are all very familiar with it. If you are not, please go watch those lessons that are talking about the absolute value function. <clears throat> so if if x is greater than or equal to zero, the absolute value of x is the same as x. If x is less than zero, negative, the absolute value of x is going to be its opposite, okay? If you look at these, these, these functions and x, when x is greater than or equal to zero, the, the, and this, is, this line is a piece, this is x equals, this basically is the, um, y equals to one. Okay, so this piece is y equals to x, sorry. And this other piece is y equals to negative x. And as a, as a polynomial, they both are differentiable, okay? But the only point of interest is that at the turning point, what is the derivative if it exists? And uh, if it doesn't exist, and we shall, we would like to see why it is not a differentiable. Okay, and this function is a very important function in calculus. All right, so we can see the derivative. Okay, we can see the derivative when x equals to, um, when x is positive, is going to be one, if derivative for x, when x equals to negative x, when x is negative, the derivative is negative one. Okay, we're gonna find out. Okay, we're gonna find out. So next we like to first discuss the problem point, which is zero. Point that we're not sure. Okay, so first let's see um, when x when a equals zero. Okay, so the first question is, is the function, is f of x differentiable as zero? Okay, is f of x differentiable at zero? Now let's take a look. Right, so by definition, we have limit at h approaching zero, right? F of zero plus h minus f of zero divided by h. We want to assess whether this limit exists. And here's our function, so we just have to plug in, okay? Um, so zero plus h is f of h. f of h is the absolute value of h. So this is gonna be absolute value of h. And uh, when x equals zero, f of zero, of course, is zero. But I, I have chosen the wrong symbol, uh, double, single. Okay, we need we just need a single. My eyes, my eyes are failing me. All right, this one, not the double one. Sorry about that. So absolute value of H. Okay, and we are assessing this limit. We, well, h approaching zero, but we don't know if h is positive or negative. 
So this gives us a reason that we have to consider limit from left and limit from right. So when x is less than zero, okay, limit from left, and we are assessing this limit, okay? Because h is approaching zero from smaller than zero, and the absolute value of h is a negative h, right? It's we're using this um, two piece uh, piecewise function, so that e that makes the limit equals to negative one. And then we're going to look at the limit when x is approaching zero from larger than zero. So this is going to be plus sign. And uh, we also will have this piece right there, but actual value of h, when h is a positive, absolute value of h is the same as h. So this will give us the limit of positive one. Obviously the limit from left and right are not the same, right? So this limit is not the same as the limit from right. And therefore, this limit, well, at h approaching zero, does not exist. Does not exist, that means f is not differentiable as zero. Okay, that is, f is not differentiable is not, sorry, is not differentiable as zero. So zero is a point that where the function is not differentiable. How about other places, right? So let's look at differentiability when x is greater than zero. When x is greater than zero, right? When x is greater than zero, we're going to be assessing the def definition of limit, right? So this is going to be x, and this is going to be x, okay? And that equals to, because a approaching zero, so we can, uh, because x is a positive, so we can easily assume Right? X plus H is also positive. Okay, so in that regard, so the absolute value of X plus H will be replacing that one. Subtracting the absolute value of X. Here, because X is positive, Okay, because, because, because X is a positive, we, and H is approaching zero. So we, we just assume a, X plus H is also positive. Okay, that's a reasonable assumption. That's a reasonable um, assumption. Okay, so as a result, when we evaluate this, um, limit, right? Because we assume x plus h is positive, the absolute value positive number is the same. So, so we get limit equals to one. So this will give us the limit equals to one. So when x is greater than zero, the derivative is equal to positive one. Similarly, when x is negative, okay, when x is negative, we're gonna look at the derivative. Okay, we're gonna look at the derivative. And because x is less than zero, so we can equally assume, we can equally assume that x plus h is for the same reason, for the same reason, okay, reasonable assumption reasonable assumption. Okay, so we assume if x is less than zero, we assume x plus h is also less than zero. So when we consider this limit, when we consider this limit, 
we can um, when we consider the absolute value of x plus h, because we assume x plus h is also um, negative, so the absolute value of a negative number is is opposite. It's opposite, so it's going to be um, like that. And the absolute value of x here is going to be its opposite. Okay, this is to use that piecewise function. All right, so I put it here for your reference. Okay, so because we assume x plus h is negative. And of course, we're going to operate minus h minus x. Right, so this is minus h, and this is going to be plus x, and minus x plus x, that makes zero. So in the end, we will have, this is going to be negative h on top, okay, and the limit is negative one. So by this time, we know that the derivative of this function Okay, does not exist. Okay, does not exist for uh, equal to zero. So greater than zero, the derivative is one. Less than zero, the derivative is negative one. So this is the function and its derivative. So put the graph, so when we take a look at the graph, okay, I'm going to put the derivative right here. So these are the, the derivative of the absolute value function, which is a piecewise function, okay, as well. Uh, that's the, that's all about the derivative of absolute value function. But in your practice, in your learning, in your learning, you will encounter some tweaks. You're going to see some tweaks of the absolute value function. So you might encounter functions such as, okay, instead of the simple case, it could be uh, x minus 3. Okay, you encounter that function. And you might also encounter function like x plus 5. Right, you may also encounter it's just various tweaks, maybe 2x, you know, minus one, something like that. So, all of these are tweaks of the absolute value function, they show up in these other forms, and you need to know how to handle it. Okay, how to handle it, you basically follow the same idea. Okay, for example, if you deal with x minus three, right? So you're gonna apply that to x minus three, right? Apply, but this time x minus three is your value function. Well, then you just say, okay, x minus three is greater than equals to zero or x minus three is less than zero. So this is gonna be x minus three or negative x minus three. You see that substitution? And furthermore, and uh, your piecewise function will be like this, right? That's gonna be x one x greater than equals to three. And this is gonna be one x is less than three. And what is the point where it is not differentiable? The point that is not differentiable, okay, so this f is not differentiable at what? Okay, you can pause and think about it and jot it down something, and the answer is, is not differentiable at three. Okay, and you can go ahead to prove uh, you know, the derivative, and so on and so forth, okay? So it's basically a shift of the 
the absolute value function from uh, centered at zero to centered at three, okay? There are other three cases in general that we see functions that are not differentiable. And for example, so the, the case we just discussed is a corner. We have a corner case, okay? This is a corner case. In the corner case, that point A, the function is not differentiable. Okay, so, so our situation is this is a corner case. Okay, it's not differentiable. And the other one is a discontinuity case. Discontinuity, well, you can see is discontinuous. If it's not continuous, then it's not, dif not differentiable. We, we, we discussed that, right? So the foundation for that is that if f is differentiable and it must be continuous. And so now it's not continuous, so it must be not differentiable. The third case, the C case, is that we have a very steep curve at this point where it's a vertical tangent line. And in this case, it is not differentiable. It is not differentiable. And you, you see this case when you recognize it, when you when you see that case. All right. So this uh, that is all for this lesson about absolute value and its differentiability and the cases of not differentiable uh, at a certain point. Thank you for watching.